Hey everybody. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a little after after uh, report. Um, well, I was on my way to the King of Hammers. Stop for gas. And uh, anyway, what happened was <laughs> it was raining. I, I was driving extra slow and uh i you know got off the freeway to go get gas because i had forgotten to go get gas and um anyway so got gas pulled out in the street and at the waiting at the traffic light i barely i mean barely turned the wheel i mean probably that much to uh to just kind of center it up with the street and i heard a boom and I was like, whoa, that didn't sound right. <laughs> so let me back back into the uh, gas station. And um, anyway, I backed in and I looked underneath. And I thought for sure I had lost a tie rod or something. And uh, I looked, I didn't see anything. So I went back in, pulled back out into the street and I had nothing. This thing was spinning everywhere. I had nothing. And, uh, and so I pulled back into the gas station and called tow truck. That was it. That was, uh, I was done for the King of the Hammers. That was it. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to go have fun. So I, I just had them tow it to uh, Four Wheel Parts in Redondo Beach. And that was the, my Suburban, my old, old Reliable. Had that almost as long as I've had the Grand. But, um, Anyway, the family truckster, as they say. So I took that to King of Hammers, and no, I don't hammer on that at all. I'm take it easy. I hammer on this one. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I uh, had to uh, figure out what it was, and once I looked, uh, let me show you back in here the. Uh, that's the steering box. It's a whole steering box. Uh, the three bolts that bolt in right at the wheel well you see that one two and then the three those three bolts that top one the head fell off so probably in the street i, I didn't go get it because i didn't know i was missing it these two look normal and you know even after my uh mojave trip you know i checked the torque on those I, it didn't move at all i just hit, hit it with a torque wrench and uh, didn't move at all. But uh, anyway, let me just show you the carnage. So there's a bolt and broke, uh, bolt, broken bolt. Both of those broke. And um, I guess these two were the ones that you could still see the bolts. And that one, the whole, the whole bolt had uh, broken off completely. And um, anyway. Where's the, uh, those are the replacement bolts. I, I struggled to find those because those are discontinued. But um, anyway, oh, there it is. There's a little piece here. Actually, it's not just the whole piece, it's the, it's the whole bolt. I didn't know that that, that bolt was saved. <laughs> but anyway, that was the bolt. And I don't know what grade these are. Well, yeah, that, that is the bolt. That is the bolt that broke off. And the other one went flying. I never recovered that one. I don't know what grade these are, but I'm, I'm thinking that they're grade five. That, that's, these are, these, I, I believe them to be factory bolts. Um, never had a reason to change them. Yeah, I think they're grade five, but anyway, so I was looking online, what the heck it is, so I ordered these 10, 7 16 by 4, and um, grade 8 hex. Anyway, these, I believe, are stronger than these. These are grade 8, I, and I think these are fives. They are not no grade nines that's for sure but anyway so i went to ace hardware and these are uh 7 16 by three and a half 
And what ended up we ended up using is uh, one three and a half and uh, two two of the four inch and one of the three and a half inch. So that's what it was. And that you know I, w I would say that that was probably the hardest thing to find. This I bought at O'Reilly's and. Um, and even with this broken off, they'll still give me my core as long as I can return the box. That's what they were saying is most important. Bring the box in the, uh, in the gearbox and they'll, they'll refund me my money. So, um, anyway, that's the deal there. Let me back up over here. Um, I had uh, four wheel parts install the uh, Mountain Vista the fabrication. Uh, well, it's kind of even back up even more. If you remember, I had a receiver hitch. And currently, the receiver hitch is here on the ground. I was talking to uh, the, uh, the owner of uh, Mount Vista Fabrication, Brandon Finnegan, I think. Anyway, um, he, he really hadn't any idea any idea that they even had these but I bought mine at like uh, Reese years ago but uh, here's what uh, Mountain Vesta fabrication um, the brace it drops down the uh, the whole uh, sway bar and um, mount this brace in there and that's where the pitman arm it's really supported so that way the uh, the uh, tie rod or drag link doesn't pull on the uh, steering box that's exactly what happened the drag link pulled it out and um, just you saw what happened and and quite frankly this is a warning to every other ZJ owner XJ owner but especially ZJ because Mount Vista Fabrication makes these. And uh, I, I really believe that I, my life was saved. <laughs> I was at a stop when this thing broke. If, if I had been exiting the freeway, it would have been catastrophic. This vehicle probably would not exist anymore. I was lucky that that's all that, that happened. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> I was kind of trying to figure out how to reuse that and I don't know I don't know if I want to mount it to here because that's basically where it was and then to this connection this the uh, the support would be have to be like right here it drops it down two inches and yeah it's just it's just I don't think it's gonna work at all and uh, I believe the big square piece sits in right in this area the big uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, four wheel parts. <laughs> it's leaking. Not surprised. I'm gonna dump it all, flush it completely, switch out to the oats coolant. But um, anyway, so that's where that is, and I got all Muga Muga's tie rods, connecting rods, sleeves. That's the rod in. So that's the rod in there and the sleeve and the rod in and the sleeve. And these are the same part numbers for anybody who's interested. The sleeves is the same as that one. And there's rod in for 5.9s. And I believe the 5.2s. This is going to be the same. But uh, the 4.0s, um, I believe this one is different. So if you have a ZJ with a 4.0, I believe this is different, according to what I found. And uh, but on a 5.2 and a 5.9, these rod ends are going to be the same. And then of course the uh, connecting rod and the drag link, these are Moog. And uh, anyway, my alignment guy, he he highly recommended I get Moog. I don't. I'm not a. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a great fabricator and you know when when your daily driver to work is down kind of want to you know take it 
speed up the process. But uh, anyway, so I lost my front receiver hitch, and now uh, all I have is my rear receiver hitch. And um, I had someone asking how did uh, this mount for the uh, Badland 12, 12,000 worked out. And uh, well, I had plans on using it to the front and it did mount. If you have a receiver hitch without the, uh, the brace, it, it's actually pretty good. It was, you know, I, I got some pictures, but yeah, it's kind of beyond you know it, it that it's no longer an option so on this why is it mounted to this extra piece here um, well if when I mounted this down to the receiver this uh, this uh, winch mount um, right in here if you look at it right there these these handles right here it would interfere with here with the uh, this bumper pad whatever they call this it's just stock bumper but that's you wouldn't be able to to mount it from there into there well actually you could you just have to uh, get rid of these handles so if you'd have to get rid of the handles and then you could uh, mount it directly to the rear receiver without the handles but then you'd have to carry it you know, from the motor and the whole spool you wouldn't have any handles but uh, otherwise yeah it's still an ongoing project it's back burner I don't plan on getting stuck <laughs> but just to give you a little update on what's going on with that it's been raining in in LA I know been raining like a like about a month straight seems like but um, anyway I'm going to this was to the front battery area and the, if I would have mounted it to the front that's what this was for and then to mount it to the very back that's what this is for so um, you know, I'm gonna run the, the cables from the batteries and all the way to the back, and and uh, this this connector right here, this extra one, this plugs into this. But uh, I'm going to mount it or put that connector on this here, and uh, that way I could disconnect it quickly, and that would be my quick disconnect. But, um, yeah, that's that's what the plan is. But uh, just to give you a little review on this on this winch mount, right in here, I had to uh, grind it a little bit. I had to, yeah. But otherwise, that was it. You know, just grind that a little bit. But uh, this Reese mounted into this bottom bottom uh, portion. No problem. I mounted this. What is it? Is it? I think it's a Walmart one. Interlock or whatever. <laughs> it won't go in. These suckers. It never ends. Never freaking ends. But I'll take a Dremel to that. I don't really care if to do that. But I'll, I'll do it to the interlock. That way I can slide the pin in. But uh, anyway, that's about it. So, you know. Just a quick recap. Get, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I said, ah, why, would I, why would I need a steering brace? Well, I found out. And apparently, you know, and I had just been reading about it, that it was kind of common. And then, sure enough, it happened to me. So, yeah, just be aware. I, I highly recommend you get that. <clears throat> you don't want to find out the hard way like I did. And, and you could have you could actually find out the harder harder way you could end up getting killed I mean I'm just so blessed I truly believe um, God was 
protecting me on that. And I was going to go out there to the desert, King of the Hammers. And I was going to go do, uh, you know, off-roading stuff. It wouldn't have made it at all. At all. I was on my way there. But uh, anyway, so right now I still need to get the some new sway bar links. I'm going to go to the store. See, this, this should be sitting probably right around here. So I was uh, researching Moog sway bar links. Anyway, yeah, there's my my Moog. Uh, this is where the tie rod and drag link came in. And the sleeves, sleeves, and the rod ends. So that's that's what those came in. Oh, cool! They didn't they didn't use my. Uh, I can take that back, get my money back. Cool. Anyway. Just a little bit of research here. So. These are some uh, sway bar links that I was looking at right here. Sway bar links. So the, the K3... That's eight and a half. That's what I'm thinking of going with. And then there's the K3197, 75As, K3173, six and a half, and O'Reilly part number seven and a quarter. That's a different part number, but it's the same seven and a quarter. Um, just by the pictures, I didn't care for the wells on those sway bar links. So I would not recommend that part number on O'Reilly. Go with the. 1760 602 have the have the guys show you both of them and compare pay the extra money but anyway so i'm going to delete these remove them from service put in some shorter ones and i'll measure it out and then i figure it out anyway all right i'm gonna go take advantage of the president's say sale on these sway bar links right now and uh I'll uh, talk to you soon. I uh, hope to see you guys at the Tierra del Sol. Come and see me. I'll be about 100 yards north of the 4x4 training center. All right. Take it easy. Have a good one. Be safe out there.